Today, I will be speaking with you about feeble minds. How would you feel if you had no education? You wouldn't be in these seats right now. Well, what if you couldn't read? You'd probably feel inferior and you would be illiterate. But would you even know what those two words mean? At Feed the Minds, people are helping those who can't read or get the books that they need for the education. I've done much research over Feed the Minds as well as read many reviews. I also have a strong opinion over literacy and I feel as if it fuels our lives. Chairperson David Goodborn um, said in the 2011-2012 annual <coughs> review, please, re please read along with me silently. At Feed the Minds, we believe nothing empowers more than the right kind of education and literacy. It gives silent ones a voice, and as the scripture teaches us, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18.21 Today we'll be overviewing the background of Feed the Minds, the Overseas Book Service, and their literacy policy. First, let's look over their background. Feed the Minds began in 1964 as a proposal and was instigated by Archbishop of York, Donald Cogan. It started with 1 million euros and at that time was $770,712.91. Feed the Minds website states, the, aim, or the appeal is aimed to provide books and enhance adult education in developing countries. This caught the eye of Prime Minister Harold Wilson. Because of his support, 235 committees were formed and not long after, Feed the Minds was born. Feed the Minds is founded on three statements vision, mission, and values. Their vision statement is, live life in its fullness and in its fullest. Feed the Minds reported in their 1964 proposal that their mission statement is to improve through education the material and spiritual thoughts of the spiritual lives of communities worldwide. Their values are based on four um, properties, diversity, creativity, integrity, and partnership. Now let's look over their overseas book service. Feed the Mind supports an overseas book service. James Cole, a Feed the Minds worker, wrote in an article in the periodical Connect, the overseas book service is going from strength to strength. We collect quality theological books and distribute them for free to more than 100 Christian colleges in a year, developing countries. Participating colleges from all denominations select titles from our catalog to stop, stock up their libraries and strengthen their community-based work. The main goal of this connection is to further their education by giving books most of these books go to colleges in Africa, Latin America, and Asia. They already have their basic education. This is just furthering it along. Feed the Minds is also involved in a literacy <coughs> policy. The literacy policy overviews full aspects and terms of their literacy work. Their literacy policy revised in 2012 reveals the written word is increasingly important throughout the world, yet literacy levels remain low across much of the global south. This is due to the weakness of formal education system, including a lack of, edu including a lack of formal education system <coughs> and trained facilitators together with the neglect of adult literacy and national development plans. Their plan to strengthen is very important and thought out. They focus mo mainly on their facilitators. They need to find teachers and role models for adults and children. Next is their language that it's taught in. The language is important. After they become more advanced, they're able to read um, global news. Uh, this also helps with their employment later on. Next is how it's taught. Most of the time, it is precipitatory interaction, which is discussion and questions. The other is school-based curriculum. Lastly, the literacy policy focuses on what these people do with their newfound talent. The policy states literate adults, for example, are more able to read up-to-date health info Literate mothers are more likely to ensure their children attend school and take up further education. Literate people of all ages are more likely to join the digital society and take advantage of technological innovations. These are all things that we are very blessed with and sometimes take advantage of. In conclusion, while you're sitting in your seats today, you're reading these slides behind me. You take for granted that somewhat wonderful talent. Reading is a part of our everyday lives, more likely since before we even came to school. Feed the Minds is there to help those who can get that education that they deserve. So today we discussed the background of Feed the Minds, the overseas books policy that they support, and their literacy policy. Thank you.